Welcome to Law Sessions. I'm Jennifer Housen. In this law session on public law, we will deal with the area of, of judicial review. Now, I have mentioned throughout uh, various other law sessions, we talked about uh, the power or executive power uh, being used in a particular manner. And I've, of course, referred to the fact that such kind of power may, of course, be judicially reviewed. But what exactly is judicial review? Now, on most uh, law syllabuses, you will tend to find that judicial review will be the one aspect of administrative law that you will actually have to cover. The most others, of course, fall under constitutional law. And in any textbook on constitutional administrative law, you will tend to find that this topic uh, is the one uh, inroad into administrative law that you'll touch on. Of course, if you go on, in this area later on or do some sort of masters, you, you certainly would widen your uh, knowledge in this area. But for present purposes, we will focus on judicial review as that part of the syllabus where it looks at the control of government or executive power. So let's make a start on that. If you consider judicial review, as I said, it looks at controlling any type of governmental or executive powers which are exercised by individuals or bodies which are acting below the level of parliament. Now what the review does is to assess whether the exercise of a particular delegated power or indeed a prerogative power, so if there is some delegated power uh, by say subordinate uh, decision making body uh, which was carried out uh, and if it was carried out within its allowed limits, then that is fine. Because if a decision-making body uh, makes a decision within its remit, then it is what is called intravires. It is making it within its powers. But if you're looking at a situation, for example, where there is some prerogative power which has been used in a particular manner, we will get back to that shortly. But if you remember, on the prerogative powers, in that law session, we discussed uh, the idea that where you have um, a prerogative, the courts can find what the prerogative is and take judicial notice of it. But if it has to do with certain aspects like high policy, the courts won't touch it. But if it affects, for example, citizens, individuals' rights, then it may be amenable to judicial review, which means it's justiciable. So the starting point is, let's consider for a moment a, a, a body, a decision-making body. Well, if they've acted in travaries, not a problem. That's perfectly legitimate. But where the decision-making body has acted ultra-virus, then the court may take action by granting a remedy. Now, the power exercised may be derived from statute or it can more or less be from another source of administ administrative power, such as, as we've mentioned, the prerogative. Now, in either case, that power may, of course, be susceptible to judicial review where it can be shown that there is a framework that sets out the limitations on those powers. Now, if it comes from a statute. Now, uh, we've spoken about before when we look at legislation, a parent act. If it is that the powers are coming from the parent act, when you're looking at delegated legislation, for example, then of course you go to the act to see if the body has acted beyond its remit. remit. Less obvious ones might of course be uh, the wider principles of natural justice. And again, it's something we'll touch on later. Now, the principal targets of judicial review are subordinate bodies uh, who have some delegated executive or governmental powers in which they make decisions. And as such, these can include things like local authorities. Um, and even as we look at human rights, it can in certain instances, of course, include the courts. It also, of course, includes various administrative departments concerned with things like housing and education. It can include government departments. In particular, it may very well be the Home Office. So think of the case of M, of, uh, M and the Home Office. So when you look at judicial review, uh, it is a legal process through which the High Court 
can examine the manner in which a public body has exercised its power. Now, the outcome of judicial review, which is called JR for short, and again, even in writing, it is an acceptable uh, abbreviation. When you look at the outcome of JR, it is to determine whether in making a decision, an action of a public body, uh, the idea is whether in coming to that decision, that body acted within its powers or whether it acted fairly or whether it acted in accordance with the HRA in 1998. Now, the judicial review may result in the granting of certain remedies to the affected party and JR is particularly significant when we look at the exercise of discretionary power by, for example, um, the administration and certainly it is also there to protect a citizen from the old arbitrary, unfair powers um, by uh, powerful bodies, as it were. So when you consider the idea of judicial review, it is to look at how a decision was reached and whether it more or less was fair or it, in all the circumstances, justice had been done. Now, at the outset, I want us to clarify that you need to distinguish between an appeal and judicial review. Because again, remember, not least within the Human Rights Act, it does provide for the courts being, uh, uh, under Section 6 of the HRA, it does provide for the court being considered a public body. So, if you are going to seek to JR a court, you need to make sure that uh, you're bringing, a JR, uh, bringing JR proceedings as opposed to, of course, appealing your case. So what's the difference? Well, an appeal is an action which is seeking to change one decision for another decision. So when you look for an example, a person or a company, uh, let's say, had sought planning permission uh, from a local authority, they am may appeal against that decision to the Secretary of State for the Environment. Now, the appeal will, of course, take the form of a rehearing by a superior body or a superior court to that of which made the decision, the original decision. And when they find, uh, when they look at that original decision, then they will come to a finding of whether or not that decision was wrong and they may in fact substitute a new decision for that. Now the provision for appeal is normally laid down in some sort of uh, statute. When you look at a judicial review, it is an action which is brought to challenge the propriety how proper was the decision-making process itself? So it looks more to the form rather than the substance. So it looks at the decision-making process rather than the decision which was actually reached. Although some persons seeking JR may invariably, of course, be motivated by the fact that they disapprove of the decision in question. That is why they're seeking to get JR. So when you look, for example, in immigration type cases, they will be seeking judicial review precisely because they are not happy with the response that they've received. In any event, judicial review is concerned with the mechanics of the process which leads up to the decision and, of course, uh, will establish whether the body who has made the decision, whether their actions uh, is such uh, are such that they have acted within or in, indeed outside of the scope of the powers they have. Now, unlike an appeal, JR will not uh, proceed to there being a substituted decision for the one that is being disputed because that is not the idea or intent behind JR. Now, in a nutshell, the difference can be uh, put in three points. The first, of course, is that the High Court has inherent jurisdiction to review public actions or decisions, whereas when you look at the availability of appeals, it usually depends on a statutory provision. The second, of course, is that the High Court's jurisdiction is only supervisory, meaning JR is only concerned with the manner or procedure by which an administrative decision was reached, in contrast, an appeal examines the substantive merits of the decision under appeal. And lastly, appeals usually result 
in a new decision which is substituted for the original one. But when you consider JR, this is not what happens. The process of judicial review begins by way of application by an interested party, but there is no automatic or unfettered right to JR. The interested party must seek the court's permission for leave uh, or leave rather to apply for JR. The point of course being that if you're looking to go down the route of JR, there's no automatic right to get it. You must seek permission. Now, when you look at uh, the framework of judicial review, the Supreme Court Act 1981 under Section 31, as well as Part 54 of the Civil Procedure Rules 1998 and the High Court's uh, jurisprudence, there are a number of conditions which exist that have to be met before leave to apply for JR is granted. There are uh, various conditions that need to be met. Um, it must be a public and not a private issue, for example. The action must be against a public body. It must be that the point being raised is justiciable. The party must have standing. It must be brought in a timely manner and you must have exhausted all your alternative remedies. Those are the requirements and we will look at them in turn. Of course, at the end of it, it must be also that you have, most importantly, a basis for bringing judicial review proceedings, meaning you must have a ground. Now then, the point of course is, assuming you meet all of those criteria, then you may then get the remedy that you're seeking. What we're going to do is con consider each of these conditions separately and then of course we will consider the remedies. We're going to take a short break and immediately on our return we will consider the conditions and we will of course start with the fact that it needs to be a public law not a private law issue but we will also see where this has caused some complications as well immediately after this short break. <music> 